One of the fun parts of my job is I get to hang with a bunch of great, great worship pastors. And uh, this room is full of great friends and uh, guys who have great ministries. But more than that, they're just uh, great men of God and uh, really look forward to hearing what they have to say. They're going to uh, approach a couple subjects, persevering through difficult times in ministry. Um, when we set out in ministry, uh, they don't teach us in college how to deal with uh, difficult times. And as you know, church people can be the absolute finest, kindest, nicest, and sometimes those same people be the exact mm -hmm. opposite. You know what I mean? So uh, we've all been there and uh, faced both sides. And uh, we just want to hear from these guys uh, how they've not just survived, but thrived, uh, thrived through this part of transition and also longevity in ministry i mean we've got some old guys in this room <laughs> none of them nearly my age but uh you know longevity in ministry uh, just keys to persevere and keep your ministry fresh and effective which is a major challenge especially uh, seems anymore if you're 55 and they want to put you out to pasture and worship ministry everybody say boo, boo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh <coughs> these guys have a lot to, to <laughs> offer and uh you know, in life, you finally, you finally uh, get to the point where you, you know something, and uh, we want to learn from from these guys. And uh, um, just really, you can't argue with personal experience, a personal testimony. You can't argue with, and uh, so all these guys are gonna uh, just share uh, their experience and their story, and uh, hopefully, it'll be a blessing to uh, those that are watching. So, uh, so guys, if you don't mind, we'll start down with Chad and. Uh, they're going to introduce themselves, tell you what church they're at, maybe how long, and then uh, maybe a little bit about their ministry, and then we'll uh, open it up, see how the Lord leads. All right. My name is Chad Fletcher. I'm the worship pastor at London Bridge Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Been there for a little under three years, and uh, just loving every bit of it. And um, a little bit about the ministry. Um, we um, if we have no choir. They stopped that before we got there, so I've had choirs at most mm -hmm. of the churches I've been at, and um, but we have no choir. We have band, we have vocals, and we do have choir for some special events, and that's a great time to pull some more people into the ministry mm -hmm. for those special events, and we have a good time with that. Uh, we have a great growing ministry. It's, a, it's in an area that's a lot of military, so a lot of people moving in, moving out all the time, and so there's always some turnover when it comes to ministry, uh, but God's really blessing us in ministry there great. at the bridge. Awesome. Mm -hmm. My name is Kevin Batson. I'm the worship pastor at Taylor's First Baptist Church in Greenville, South Carolina metro area. I've been there for 15 and a half years. I grew up in Greenville and so finally came back after being gone for, for many years. This is my, I just celebrated my 40th year in full-time wow. ministry. And so uh, things are going well. It's a good, good church, great pastor and enjoy it. Great. I'm Joe Fitzpatrick, worship and music pastor at Nashville First Baptist Church in downtown Nashville. Mm. We're right in the heart of the city with the city on our hearts. Mm. Uh, it's a challenge uh, to have an environment where most of your people come from the suburbs, but the Lord is blessing us nonetheless, and we're grateful for him. Sending our new pastor, Dr. Thomas West from London, England. Mm. Mm. My name is Nick Weaver. I'm the worship pastor at Central Baptist Church in Warner Robins, Georgia, where Robins Air Force Base is. Uh, we've had a great, sweet time of ministry. I've only been there for two and a half years but uh, God has blessed that church and he brought, uh, the Lord has brought over 400 new members to the church in the last two and a half years. And our worship ministry has grown to 130 in the choir and about 25 in our orchestra. And God is still moving. So uh, it's humbling and a sweet time of ministry. And I've enjoyed every bit of it. And Phil actually helped me get there with the CMC uh, Celebration Ministry staffing. So awesome. I'm Jeff Elkins. I'm a minister of worship at First Baptist Church. Tulsa, Oklahoma. I've been there over 23 years. Mm. Uh, enjoy the ministry. Love my pastor. Mm. And I was the first staff member he called. I didn't know him. He was 29 years old, mm. and I'm older than him. And I saw his first call six months into his ministry. And we've kind of committed together to serve in Tulsa, uh, a lot like, somewhat like Nashville, where we're downtown. We serve a regional mm. uh, community, and mm. it's just a, a great place to be. Love it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. My name is Michael Moore. I'm at Sarasota Baptist Church in beautiful, sunny Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> and I've been there 26 years. And uh, just starting with my second pastor, I served with a great man, Dr. Mike Landry, for 25 years. And now serving with Pastor Michael Lewis, uh, who's been there just a little over a year. Great. 
I'm Scott Lee. I'm at First Baptist Church in Fairhope, Alabama, and I've been there only a year and a half, but that was also my first church out of seminary back in the 80s. I uh, actually started in ministry in 1979, so uh, it's been a long, long time. Great years doing what God called, him, called me to do. My name is Alan Lowe. I'm the worship pastor at Mims Baptist Church in uh, the North Houston area in the town of Conroe, and I've been there for just started my fourth year in December, and uh it's an exciting church to be a part of. There's a new pastor, and uh, he called me, and I have had the opportunity to kind of come alongside him. And uh, as we continue to see the Lord build that church, and Conroe is one of the fastest growing cities in the state of Texas. So we have a lot of new people coming and getting involved, and it's just a really exciting place to be. Great. My name is Dale Wilbur. I'm the worship pastor at the Heights Baptist Church, just south of Richmond, Virginia, in Chesterfield. And I've been able to serve at this church for 14 years, been in ministry for 38 years, served with a wonderful pastor, uh, Dr. Randall T. Hahn. And uh, we, we have a uh, fully graded worship ministry um, focus on the next generation, multi-generational worship, uh, use choir and orchestra. And uh, uh, I've served uh, nine churches, 10 different pastors, and uh, just feel really blessed to be where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. Tim Wedby has served as worship pastor at Moderly Baptist Church in Longview, Texas, in East Texas. And um, we are definitely a choir and orchestra church and very blessed. We have a new pastor and excited that he is a choir and orchestra guy as yeah, well, man. which is a blessing to yeah. us. So been there for about 16 years now. Wow. Great. Wow. Wow. Great stories here that we're, we're going to hear. And uh, as both Dale and Tim were talking, you know, really... The gatekeeper for worship is the pastor. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you have a worshiping pastor, I guarantee a worshiping church. And um, I don't think Dale or Randy would mind me sharing this, but uh, Randy's probably not the best singer in the world. And he claps on one and three. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> but he is a worshiper. And I Amen. love standing next to him in Amen. worship. Because I know when that sound reaches heaven, it becomes a... A sweet, sweet sound in the ears of God, but he's a worshiper. Yeah. And because of his worship, and he clapping on one and three even, people have the freedom in that congregation to worship. And it, and he is the gatekeeper. Amen. It really doesn't he's, matter uh, how great you guys are. Yeah. With a, without a pastor that's a worshiper, um, there's a, a certain lid on that worship. He in models that, worship for the whole yes, church. Yes. Uh, and it's it's not a talent based; it's a heart based exactly uh, worship. Yeah. And uh, our church sees him. He's you know I've served with pastors before, and not I don't mean this in a negative way. That that, that counting the numbers during the yeah. worship service yeah. or going around shaking hands while other people are trying to engage in worship. Yeah. Randy's on the front row, uh, head engaged, heart engaged, oh, yeah. hands in the air, and our church yeah. sees that, mm -hmm. and uh, he definitely leads. Yeah. Leads point in um, worship in the awesome. church. And Tim's pastor uh, actually is in his 30s, and he yeah. loves choir. Guys, can you believe yeah, 36. that? <laughs> uh, 36. <laughs> and yeah. sends uh, Tim notes all the time just yeah. encouraging him. And, uh, mm. you know, he waited a long time for a pastor. We did. And uh, and what a blessing to get somebody that just supports you. And it goes both ways, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I've been at your church to record and just to meet your pastor in his 30s that can even spell the word choir yeah. but he's such a supporter and i because of that that frees up the congregation of worship and uh, anybody want to address that uh just the, the fact that the pastor is the gatekeeper and and just the freedom that gives a congregation our, our pastor and his wife are on the front row mm -hmm. and that's what we see when we look down he's yeah. the first person standing uh, and when he stands, everybody stands behind him when the choir is going to sing yeah. or whoever's going to lead. Yeah. And um, and he's singing. He can't sing a lick. Right. And uh, he would tell you that. I love it. But it doesn't matter. That's right. Yeah. Man, so that's a great thing. So some pastors and some humans, you know, when they can't sing, they're very intimidated by yeah. it. But man, when he's he, not. Yeah. And his wife that's, loves to uh, that's great. video. Uh -huh. And so he's standing next to her singing. <laughs> oh, no, no, no surprise. <laughs> a boy can he preach. <laughs> Our pastor's a front row. He and his wife front row singing. The other day like I looked that. down and I was like, oh, he's gone. Where'd he go? And I turned around and he's up in the choir. Is that just right? Walked oh, up there. That I was like, right. I'm singing the choir. <laughs> <laughs> he was up there singing. It was that great. is great. And that's a, that's a little country church, man. It's a big church. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, man. Well, anybody uh, gone through a period of transition where it was a challenge and um, probably wasn't your first choice to walk through, but uh, just your story of God restoring ministry and opening doors that you never uh, thought would open. Some There's been times in my life where you kind of wonder if the sun's coming up the next day, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And uh, uh, Anybody want to share, share that? I know a lot of you have recently made some transitions. I served in uh, in a church. I won't name the church, but mm -hmm. served in a church recently. That was a fairly difficult um, part of our lives, mm -hmm. me and my me and my wife. But God used it. Um, and I said something earlier, and I, I really meant that. That uh, as as leaders and as just human beings, mm -hmm. I feel like we learn more in our failures sure. than we do in our successes. Wow. And uh, I'm I am I am a true story of mm -hmm. God using the least of these mm -hmm. for His glory. Wow. Um, and and brought me out of a time that was uh, fairly difficult, and mm -hmm. uh, to to what I've said a moment ago, we're just a sweet a sweet time of ministry. I'm really enjoying, yeah. and he's using me and my family in a really awesome way. Yeah, and I'm great. humbled because I'm not worthy of it. But we all uh, feel the same way. But it's a privilege <laughs> to serve and, and yeah. to honor him, and and uh, and so God is good. But I learned in those dark yeah. times. Yeah, and to your credit, mm -hmm. you know, we uh, gave you some opportunities, mm -hmm. and you said, "No, I need to stay here and be faithful." So you yep. stayed. A couple extra years to help that church, and yeah, mm. man, God honored that. There's no doubt, Amen. and it makes it sweeter, doesn't it, when it you does. move on? Mm. Yeah, mm. but I sure applaud you for that. A lot of guys would have said, "I'm out of here," <laughs> and uh, and man, you stayed and were faithful, and I believe that's why God honored your move, no doubt. Amen. Thank you, brother. Mm. Several years ago, we went through a really, really difficult time. <laughs> um, called to a church and moved all the way halfway across the country, and had two small kids and. Mm moved there and started life and and it became a very difficult position from the, almost the very beginning right. of getting there and um you know and during that time you know you ask god like what's going right. on why why am i having to go through yeah. all this why is it so difficult yeah and uh you know and god sustains you and he did mm -hmm. he sustained us mm -hmm. um through the whole thing but two years after being there you know i get called into the pastor's office one day and out of the blue he just says you're just not a fit Oh, man. Wow, and um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's one thing for him to tell me that, yeah, but to have to tell my kids that, yeah, um, mm -hmm. you know, my son was at youth yeah. camp oh, when I got man. that word, oh, had to have him brought home, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you know, good. and my kids looked at me and just said, "Daddy, please don't ever take another church. Mm -hmm. wow. Don't ever, don't do this anymore." Wow, and um, mm. you know, and those were some of the darkest yeah. days, yeah, but you know. My wife and I both, we just, we, we knew mm -hmm. and we know that God is faithful yeah. and God always sustains us. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I remember reading through um, Exodus and mm -hmm. Moses was leading the people into the promised land mm -hmm. and, and, you know, Pharaoh's doing all this business and, and not cooperating and, mm -hmm. and they go mm -hmm. and they're, they're headed in and the scripture, I'm trying, I can't remember exactly what the verse is, but it says basically just stand still mm. the lord will fight for you yeah mm. and and i remember just kind of having to be in that place where we didn't know mm. where we were going to go next yeah. we didn't know what we were going to do wow. music is all i've ever done i mean god called me into ministry and that's what my life has been sure. and um you know and through the, through different circumstances the lord opened the door and took me as a consultant to a, a little church back across the country mm -hmm. and ended up going there and I would fly in on Saturday and lead a rehearsal, lead mm -hmm. worship on Sunday and then fly back home mm -hmm. on Sunday night. And right. after doing that for about eight weeks, um, the Lord just knit my heart together with the senior pastor yeah. Yeah. and, and he had been broken and he had been hurt by the mm -hmm. congregation at that church. And, right. and it, the Lord just took something that was so fragile and made it a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Wow. And, uh, and we were there for three and a half years mm -hmm. and, the Lord just, you know, I think about this the passage of scripture where it talks about, you know, I'll restore the years the locusts have eaten. Yeah. Wow. And, yeah. and I really feel like yeah. that's what God yeah. did yeah. and redeemed the time with my children mm -hmm. and restored their faith in, in the church itself. Yeah. And we just saw God move. And I never thought that we would leave there. Yeah. And then I get a phone call one day out of the blue from this guy that had seen me lead worship and knew that there was this church in Texas that was looking for somebody. Mm -hmm. And. Well, lo and behold, here we are. We yeah. just began our fourth year in wow. ministry, yeah. and, and it has been one of the sweetest times of my life. But, you know, for any of us that have gone through those times, I yeah. mean, you you know when you go through them, 
God is refining you. God is sharpening you. God is comforting you. God is sustaining you. Yeah. And um, for anybody that may be listening to this today, yeah. that's going through that time where you're you're going, what in the world am I going to yeah. do? How am I going to get through this? You know, one day at a time. Re remind yourself of the calling that God has on your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's mm -hmm. one of the things when God calls you to do something, you can't do anything else. Yeah, that's right. 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 And um, mm -hmm. you know, and I stand here today as a testimony mm -hmm. about God's faithfulness that yeah. God can restore those things. Yeah. He can Thank redeem God. those times. And mm -hmm. even though it's it's hard and we're still praying, my you know, my son goes to church every Sunday. Um, very faithful, doesn't give us any problems. Mm -hmm. You know, you hung out with him this yeah. past summer. Great, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, but he's still there's still that that mm -hmm. Mm. That little piece that he's sure. not given over to the Lord yet, so we still pray for that yeah. and still believe in, that God's going to do that sure. in his life. But you know, mm. life is hard, yeah. ministry is hard, yeah. but God is good, Absolutely. and we know that He is faithful. So you know, we do what we do. Yeah. We continue to follow the Lord and go with Him each step. Yeah, man, that's a and great. It's, it's great interesting way. how you find that refreshment or that restoration mm -hmm. in the places you least expect it. Yeah. To. yeah, I had a season where I was not serving full-time in the local church and actually thought local church ministry might be in my rearview mirror. Mm. Um, wow. And so I did a little interim at a church mm. that probably was not the most exciting church, <laughs> but those folks, yeah. they fanned the flame wow. and came back. And now 15 yes. years later, about that? I've been able to serve greater. Yeah, it's, um, it's, mm. Mm. it's neat how God uses people yeah. in different ways. Well, yeah. and one of the coolest things ever is this guy right here happened to be in the same town that the Lord took me to, and I'd known him from being yeah. in, a, in a ministry group before. Yeah, and um, but he's one of the ones that God used to encourage How me. How about that? You know, and you invited yeah. us to come to that roundtable yeah. discussion. And, yeah. And yeah. um and it was just such a blessing. Yeah. You know, and then to see how Scott where he is now and how yeah. God took him to where he is yeah. and and it's mm -hmm. just it's a beautiful thing when you yeah, see the hand of the Lord. Man, that's yeah. great. That's right. That is awesome. Thank you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. You came through. Uh, Pretty traumatic situation, to say the least. I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was unique. It's very challenging. Um, lost our pastor due to some, just died in a car accident, and there's some stuff in his past that came to light as well as a result of just everything that had happened, and so. Mm -hmm. Um, church went through some tough, tough mm. days, and um, and you were executive pastor too. Yeah, you? I served as executive pastor and um, and uh, worship pastor at the yeah. same time there, yes. and and yeah, it was just really tough days. You know, um, the thought crosses your mind of yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea to leave, <laughs> and go somewhere else. Um, no but uh, God never released us from that setting, mm. and it was very obvious that God wanted us to stay, yeah. and. So thankful he mm -hmm. did. And I mean, I sure. guess I would say you do get through the storm. You do get to yeah. the other side. And God is faithful. There's no question. Yeah. And, you know, having walked through that, I guess, you know, there's there's two or three things that I really took away from uh, navigating, I guess, for myself, mm -hmm. something like that. And that was, man, your your walk with Christ is utmost. Without yeah. it, you're yeah. you're going to yeah. um, hit the bottom and, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a challenge to get yeah. back up. And uh, so I just, you know, any guys going through that stuff, man, you you gotta you gotta make your walk with Christ number one. Wow, yeah. absolutely. And um, the second thing is, man, you gotta take care of your family and yes. Yes. You, and your wife especially. Yeah. She's gonna walk through it with you, yeah. and and she's yeah. gonna struggle with yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And you may not bring all the garbage home, but she she sees it and hears it, sure. and, mm -hmm. and she lives it with you. Yeah. And um, you got to be there to care for your family yeah, too. Well, that's a good word. And I just the, the last thing I just say too is have somebody in your life, mm -hmm. a friend or um, mm. somebody in another church ministry, something that yeah. you can, I guess, dump it all on yeah. as well. Sure. You know that you can sure. share that with because man, wow. it's so important that you have somebody to speak to, uh, to give you advice, to give yeah. you wisdom, to uh, say, hey, you know what? I get why you feel that way, but that's you're not being smart. <laughs> you know, maybe you should think yeah, about this yeah. differently. Somebody will be honest with you mm -hmm. and, and challenge you, but also encourage you and support yeah. you. And those were three things I walked away with, mm -hmm. with what we dealt with and what we went through that, um, when you got to navigate tough times in your yeah. church. Those three things to me are mm -hmm. just of the utmost yeah. importance. Yeah. Well, that's a good um, word. In fact, uh, <laughs> Tim followed an icon who had been at the church for 40 some 40 years, years as worship wow. pastor. And wow. Tim, as you know, you follow an icon like that. Normally there's a, 
what they call a guinea pig in between or just yep. some mm -hmm. some guy that fills yeah. in <laughs> until the next guy comes but uh to me we're in early 30s right 31 i believe yeah, yeah. and that's when you find mm -hmm. that church people can not always be the the kindest you know what i mean because yeah. they're hurt because yeah. of their wonderful friend um and dale was a just a wonderful man yeah but they they loved him so much and then they didn't accept you at first yeah. and just um well, I mean, the church went from a pastor and a worship pastor in their yeah. 70s to two guys in their early 30s. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's just such a yeah. massive pendulum yeah. swing yeah. for any church yeah. to endure and to go through. And it's, mm. it's hard on a church yeah. to go through yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But I, I call you the poster child for perseverance because uh, <laughs> <laughs> you stayed then yeah. and then you stayed. I can't imagine what you went through just a few years ago. Um, but you stayed and God honored it. And now look, you got Pastor that loves choir. We do. We do. And you <laughs> send you notes all the time. I mean, yeah, that it's is, been that fantastic. Yeah. yeah, man. God, God redeems that which Satan tries to take away. Oh, that's that's really right. We yeah. just have to be faithful. Man, that's good. We yeah. have to be faithful. Yeah. Yes. Right. Wow. Yeah. You know, Phil, we went yeah. through a really tough time, <clears throat> uh, and it had nothing to do with church. It had to mm. do with one of our boys getting hurt. He uh, mm. working at a mm. famous chicken restaurant. Uh, that we all have been to and uh, they had him taking out some hot oil and this cart that it was on was not proper and it mm. spilled all down his legs oh, man. Uh, and second and third degree burns was wow. in and out of the hospital in and out of um, operating room once a day once every two days mm. Mm. and um, it was it was a very tough time yeah. and then not too much longer after that he had another accident mm. that almost cost him his life wow. and our church wow loved us yes. through this Man. Mm -hmm. and was so supportive. The mm -hmm. pastor was so supportive. Mm -hmm. And when you go through things like that, yeah. when you come up against things like uh, service types are going to change, you're going to have one modern, one contemporary. It, it makes you realize it's the people of the church that love mm -hmm. you, that have been there for you. When you've been there 26 years, yeah. there's a lot of them. Yeah. To see you through those times sure. mm -hmm. and you're thankful for the the spirit of the lord being with you mm -hmm. but the people that you served yeah and that have served with you and they surround you and they lift you up uh it makes a difference and it makes yeah. it easier to face the hard times mm -hmm. you're going through as well. <coughs> well that's yeah. a good word thank you anybody else <laughs> i faced a really tough transition one time out of a church that i thought was going to be at Probably that made possibly the rest of my career. Yeah. We've been there for almost ten years, and mm -hmm. and um, just a wonderful church, um, and just great ministry. Yeah. One of the fastest growing churches in America at one point, mm -hmm. and um, and, and so anyway, uh, it kind of came out of nowhere for me mm. that uh, a different direction was going to be had, and uh, that didn't include me. Wow. Oh, wow. And uh, and so mm -hmm. um, had a great strong ministry, thriving, mm. and I, I just I just missed it. I didn't see it coming. And um, mm -hmm. and it was handled in a way that probably should have been handled differently. Sure. Um, and uh, and so it really left me in a place I'd never been in before, emotionally, mm -hmm. spiritually, yeah, all the above. And I was uh, I got to s such a low point just trying to process, yeah, and make sense of it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were question marks for the Easter periods, mm -hmm. um, even my mm -hmm. even my faith, and wow. uh, which is. Uh, on me to, to be in that position, but mm -hmm. it really taught me to draw even closer to the Lord because, sure. he, as we all know, He's so faithful. Yeah. He, he wasn't surprised by anything, yeah. and He had a plan even in the midst of the chaos. Yeah. He had a plan, and the plan was at that moment was just to wait, yeah. which is the hardest thing. Oh to do. yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. You know, because you want to take care of your family, yeah. Yeah. you want to keep serving, and mm -hmm. and and, uh, and so there was there was a period of time there where it was just nope, wow, and just wait. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, and mm -hmm. so that's you know when you're when you're going we, at that time we had four services every weekend yeah. across two days and have been doing that for nine ten years yeah and wow. uh, and so that was the opposite of waiting yeah <laughs> and yeah. Uh, and so uh, but God really uh, drew me to Himself mm -hmm. I had no choice yeah mm -hmm. and uh, not that I had not been walking with the Lord but I but uh, I really feel like I learned I needed to walk even deeper with yeah. the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a plan. Yeah. And uh, that all needed to happen. Yeah. Maybe not the way it happened, but sure. it needed to happen. Sure. And uh, now we're where we are now, and God has continued to bless. Yeah. And so when there seems to be a time where mm -hmm. I don't have the answers, I know God. Mm -hmm. I never doubted God. Yeah. But I didn't. I had no clue what was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and and I saw no light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Which shows the lack of faith on my part. Yeah. Uh, but God still blessed. 
in, well, in the end and uh, continues to bless even yeah. now. And so uh, the, the question marks are gone. Parents are back in place. Mm -hmm. I look at every one of you, and you're you're now in great situations. Every single one of you, but it hasn't always mm -hmm. been that no, way. No, Sometimes no. in the same church, you know. <laughs> and uh, man, it's great to see. Um, mm -hmm. And we're all testimonies, you know. Trophies of God's grace. Mm -hmm. That's right. And um, Kevin, you did something once. Um, you called people together and uh, had them express their opinion. <laughs> <laughs> what a mistake. That was. <laughs> Tell us about that. I mean, yeah, we, that when was... I heard that, I thought, how well, about we that? were, never we were in, a declining, <laughs> in a declining situation. Our church had been more than cut in half in terms mm -hmm. of numbers. And mm -hmm. it was, it was honestly just poor leadership, mm -hmm. leadership disability. Yeah. And, uh, so it, the, the meeting that was supposed to be about one thing really just kind of became a forum for wow. for people sharing their their dismay <laughs> sure. about how things were going. Sure. But, mm -hmm. You know, listen to all these stories. The thing that comes to me is how those experiences that we've been through that have been difficult yeah. change how we worship mm -hmm. and change how we lead worship. Yeah. The sweetness of mm -hmm. of what we yeah. get to, as you say, we're kind of all in a good place right sure. now and how it's it's because mm -hmm. we can look back on yeah. God's faithfulness Makes in it those sweeter. very tough <laughs> yeah. times yeah. and those, yeah. those struggles. Um, a lot of you and, have and relatively new that. pastors. I know yeah. Kevin, you're thrilled with your your pastor, and, yeah. Yeah. and I've been through a bunch forward. of pastoral <laughs> changes yeah. in every yeah. church wow. that I've been. Yeah. In. I've had three pastors in every church that I've served. So. Wow! Wow! But uh, mm -hmm. you know it's. It's, I think somebody said it's, it's be faithful to your calling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change. Yeah. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and hold things loosely. Yeah. Things, Man, things may yeah. be taken from <laughs> you. Right. Things yeah. may change. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hold them loosely. Mm -hmm. Don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> take your, your ministry seriously. Yes. But, and then trust, trust God's good word. faithfulness. Because mm -hmm. he is faithful. Yeah. That's, that's a good is. word. Yeah. Joe, how long have you been in Nashville now? I'm coming up on 15 years. Is that right? And uh, in downtown church, man. That's right. And I follow the guy who have been there 30 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there was that uncertainty at first. But then, <laughs> you know, the people are very affirming and I yeah. uh, feel God's hand of blessing, grace, mercy, and favor upon my life. And yeah. I've been fortunate over the years to be in places for a period of time. Yeah. I started out when I was 17 years old, yeah. served first Baptist Yale, Oklahoma for five years. Uh -huh. Then went to Southwestern Seminary, served an intern with uh, Bill Pearson at Travis Avenue exactly. Baptist yeah. Church wow. yeah. for those two years. Moved to Jacksonville, yeah. Florida, served for yeah. five years there. Met my wife in Jacksonville. Yeah. And then I served 20 years in Little Rock at Park Hill Baptist yeah. Church. Yeah. And then coming up on 15, so you can do the math. <laughs> <laughs> um, you had a big but, concert series there at Park Hill. That's you? right. We, yeah. we did. We did indeed. But, uh, you know, for longevity, I think that, you know, number one, having an undeniable divine call yeah. of God for your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. his grace, his mm -hmm. mercy, and, yeah. and perseverance, yeah. allowing you to have that perseverance, yeah. you know, adds to the, all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, some other things are just the, the things that we, you know, know that we should be doing and the mm -hmm. things that are important in life. And that's yeah. how you care about people. Yeah. Uh, Dick Hill led a conference and he said, there's three things you need to do mm -hmm. to be successful and experience longevity in a particular church, mm -hmm. wherever God's called you to be. That's love the people. Yeah. Love the people. Yeah. <laughs> Love the people. <laughs> we lost Dick, though. Just, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, yeah. yeah. He, and he did. He was, yeah. Like, yeah. He was a lover of people, yeah. man. I and people don't really care. You know, it's like the old actor yeah. said, they don't care what you know. Yeah. It's how much do you really care about yeah. them. Yeah. So, you know, your competency may be off the charts. You, know, you may yeah. be so confident yeah. and have great competency and great education experiences. Yeah. But uh, if your character <laughs> is not what it should be. Yeah. You know, Boy. and if you don't care about people, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it really is not going yeah. to pay the dividends that you need. You got to invest in people's lives. You yeah. need to be there, you know, when when kids are being hatched, <laughs> when they're being, dis uh, when they're being uh, hitched, yeah. when they're being dispatched. Uh, you know, those are important things and everything in between, you know. Yeah. Oftentimes, guys, it's, it's those surgeries that are always, at, you know, the crack of dawn. Yeah. Yeah. You got to crawl out of the, uh, bed early in the morning yeah. to yeah. be there, to have prayer with your yeah. people and invest in their lives wow. and let them know that you care because, yeah. you know, quite yeah. frankly, I think all of us here, you know, do have that calling of our lives. We yeah. wouldn't be sitting here now. Yeah. Um, but uh, a part of that calling is investing in people's lives. Boy. 
and uh, being faithful to yeah. the Lord and, and minister. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember, we recorded uh, Champion Forest about five times when Dick was there, and he's not a technician, you know, <laughs> at all. But he people loved him so much. He loved them so much. He says, "See this CD." learn what's on it mm. and those people came so well prepared it always amazed me that they came so well prepared because they loved him and he told them to do it yeah. but not because he rehearsed them like crazy he yeah. hardly rehearsed them at all yeah. but they were so well prepared because they just wanted to do their best for him and because they knew he laid down on the tracks for them you know mm -hmm. and, and like you say longevity like jeff you know the payoff is you get to see people grow yes. and uh, like the hatching and whatever you said, <laughs> <That was great. laughs> hitching, hitching but hitching and hatching. But you, yeah, and then you end up marrying them, and, that's right. uh, yeah. and obviously sometimes burying them. And uh, mm -hmm. that has to be the payoff, isn't it? Well, it's great to see the and generations, your old yeah. youth choir kids that yeah. oh, are coming to your adult choir, bringing mm -hmm. their children yeah. to sit on their laps <laughs> uh, during a rehearsal. Sure. Uh, that's a payoff. I think also, uh, and I amen everybody. This is very uh, yeah. beneficial sure. uh, for me as well. But um, I, I prayed for a pastor. Mm -hmm. I prayed, for, and not everybody gets that perfect pastor, but I, yeah. I went, I heard Jack Hayford speaking <laughs> at, you know, what's the thing we used to do in the Rockies, music in the Rockies or mm -hmm. something oh, like yeah. that at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. And he sure. said, you know, Abraham, God gave Abraham a dream, mm -hmm. you know, to, for the, the generations yeah. uh, beyond him. He said, write your dreams down. Yeah. And so I, I still keep this notebook near my desk where wow. I dreamed of yeah. a pastor that I liked to work with and God yeah. sent me that way to a young pastor yeah. um, where we committed together yeah. to work through conflicts yeah. um, to not let anything fester wow. mm -hmm. and just to be accountable to each yeah. other and that has been a blessing Yeah, and I'm, having uh, each other's back like that 100% like, Wow. and uh, we're not hanging out and yeah. going out to eat <laughs> but we love each other and yeah. we Texted me today. He said, "Love yeah. you." And man, and uh, gave me pointers. Mm -hmm. I want to say tonight. I said, says, "Truthfully, <laughs> <laughs> well, the deal is." I said, "You know what? We don't really get to choose longevity." Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I mean, we're cold. Nope. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But right. I said, "You might hold some of my longevity at this church in your hands." Right. Mm -hmm. right. Why do I have longevity here? Mm -hmm. And he's, he mentioned that wow. commitment. Yeah. Uh, and all the things that Joe said about people and yeah, yeah. and uh, and those kids. When I first came to Tulsa. 20 some odd years ago, I called every teenager, the yeah. 300 teenager, I called everyone on the phone. Wow. Even if they're brothers, I called families with three kids. Yeah. I'd yeah. hang up and I'd call back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, hey, I want you to come to I'm youth choir. Line, right? You don't know me yet, but we're going to have youth wow. choir. We're going to Washington, D.C. Yeah. at the end of the year. And, Man. and, and uh, that 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 kind of stuff. And those those are the kids that are coming back to choir. Oh, man, that's the right. now. So anyway. That's the payoff yeah, right that's there. The, oh, man. That's the payoff. Yes. You know, it's amazing. Uh, the, the ministries represented here mm -hmm. and uh, the stories and the lives. We, we, we can all talk about the longevity. I, I, I'm a firm believer, uh, as it says in Ecclesiastics, there's a season and a time for everything. Yeah. Yeah. My journey is uh, I'd never experienced longevity right. until my last two churches. Yeah. It was a, a calling of a transition. Yeah. It was a calling, a, a specific type of calling. And um, I, I, I think through it all, mm -hmm. I love where I'm at now and the time I've been able to spend, especially my last two churches. But yeah. uh, being grateful, uh, yeah. I think, is so important to longevity. Right. Remembering what Christ has done right. in you yeah. <laughs> and for you right. is yeah. primary to our ministry. If we ever get to the point where you're not grateful about yeah. that, you can't lead a ministry. Yeah. I, another thing I think is so important for longevity is, um, and somebody may need to hear this, uh, is it's so important to self-evaluate. Yeah. I think a lot of people uh, overlook that uh, character. Uh, they 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 lose the ability yeah. to see that uh, the mistakes that they're made uh, making well, yeah. and willing to correct those mistakes. Yeah. And and I will uh, I will say through my ministry I have made so many mistakes. <laughs> But I want to learn from those, and I don't want to repeat those. Yes. And uh, yes. one of the things from my early ministry to my ministry now is, um, uh, I don't know if any of you guys experienced this, but was uh, surrendering uh, to the authority of the senior pastor. Right. Yeah. I struggled with that early in my ministry. Yeah. I, 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 I felt like what I was doing was... So important. It was too important, and <laughs> sure, uh, sure. it wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't a role of submission. And uh, 
and I had heartache because of that. Yeah. And where I'm at now, uh, I, I understand that. Mm -hmm. And I think God has wow. just blessed and shown favor yeah. through that. Yeah. So I would, yeah. I would encourage anybody listening <laughs> and, and is struggling with ministry right now to self-evaluate mm -hmm. yes. uh, themselves. And, and really, it's, it hurts. It's painful. Sure. It cuts. Sure. And uh, uh, find those areas that you can change and align uh, your philosophies and uh, with scripture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then see how God moves in your well, life from there. Yeah. Michael, you shared something today. Three points. You got to share them with us. <laughs> I don't remember what they were. Yeah. Yeah. Support longevity. your pastor, support your pastor, support your pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was listening to these guys and I thought back, I thought, you know, it's longevity, not just in one church, but longevity in ministry yeah. yes. and the sticking with it. Yeah. And yeah. then you get to look back and see the fruit. I, we can look back from way back when we were first Baptist Atlanta yeah. and look at kids that were in our student choir yeah. and what they're doing now yeah. and mm -hmm. the places they are and the places yeah. they're serving. Or whether it was an intern that came through our church that's mm -hmm. now leading worship in another country or another state or another church yeah. um, or a, a student who's left and gone to college mm -hmm. and the first thing the student did is jumped in to serve in a church yeah. wow. you know? yeah. and that then we this this is um we're going through a little bit of a challenge at our church with mm -hmm. changing from being all one worship expression to two mm -hmm. and so we're having a meeting and my assistant said to me the other day you know i didn't feel qualified i thought what qualifies me to help with this and then i realized it's because i was under you for 20 years Hmm. that I can hmm. help through this. Mm -hmm. and so that changed my attitude yeah, a little bit. Okay. And it made me realize, okay, mm -hmm. it's okay that things change. It's mm -hmm. okay it's not the way that I think it should be. Uh, and it's okay that we have different ways to do things. Mm -hmm. When you look and see, because you've been willing to stick with it, that God honors that and he raises people up yeah. who can continue to fulfill the vision. Wow, that's good. You know, the opposite is mm -hmm. true too. We all went to school with people that uh, yeah. we... You think what happened to them? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or right. uh, yeah. they had such great promise, but mm -hmm. somehow just got sidetracked. And um, mm -hmm. man, that that's sad to me. You know, is is people that you, you lost contact with that maybe got out of the ministry that were called. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the Modesto Manifesto with uh, Billy Graham, but when Billy Graham had first started, you know, he did the L.A. Crusade. It was supposed to be like two weeks, ended up being from like thirteen weeks, and. Um, William Randolph Hearst got saved early in that crusade. And, you know, now Facebook, you can become famous instantly in one mm -hmm. day. Back then you couldn't. But William Randolph Hearst put Billy Graham on the front page of all his papers around the world. And that revival caught fire in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> actors came to Christ. I mean, it was just amazing. I think it went 13 weeks. So they're in, in dumpy little, well, Modesto. <laughs> Modesto is not L.A., but they're in this small town in middle California, and Billy Graham called Cliff Barrows and George Beverly Shea to his room. He says, guys, this is much greater than us. I mean, we are world famous now. Wherever we go, people are watching what we're doing. We have to absolutely be accountable to each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the three mm -hmm. of them knelt down in Billy's hotel room in Modesto, probably some motel, and uh, committed to each other. And look how God blessed them into their 90s, George yeah. Beverly Shea, maybe 100, <clears throat> and uh, and they never strayed, because that was Billy's point, is we've seen so many people become famous and believe their own press and stray, mm -hmm. and, and uh, man, they wouldn't be seen in an elevator with uh, another woman, just the two of them, mm -hmm. they'd, uh, they'd drink milk, you know, in, in a restaurant <laughs> to make sure people knew that's milk, <laughs> you know, and not a, a, so I mean, they were so, so careful on that, but the Modesto Manifesto, and and God honored that. Yeah. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. yeah. They never strayed. I mean, you just you look up integrity in the Bible, in the uh, dictionary, and there's Billy Graham. Right. You Absolutely. know, um, mm -hmm. but without that, you know, they could have easily strayed because I mean, they were world famous back then in the early, mm -hmm. early ministry. And uh, wow. Well, anybody that I've ever known that has fallen in ministry, um, the one thing that's always in common with every person that has fallen is they were not having their time in the Word mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Their relationship with Christ mm -hmm. had not remained solid where it needed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and that's one of the things that just convicts me so much yeah. because, you know, all of us, we, we, 
we all are busy, mm -hmm. you know, and we're busy planning, we're busy yeah. meeting, we're busy um, meeting yeah. and busy meeting, <laughs> and busy planning, and and all that, and and so it's so easy um, for us to neglect the thing that is the most important thing for yeah. us to do, and that's spending time with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's my word of encouragement to anybody, yeah. that if you're not walking with the Lord, mm -hmm. if you're not reading the Bible every day, if you're yeah. not praying. Um, well, that's a great word. We, it, you're going to mess up. Mm -hmm. It's gonna, it, You're going to fall. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to get you. He's mm -hmm. going to take you down. Mm -hmm. But if you remain faithful to the Word of God yeah. and in prayer, yeah, yeah. We can do and we can yeah, do anything. Right. Yeah, right. we can do anything in our yeah. strength. Yes, we're, in our strength, yeah, we're going to fall. Yeah. but with God's strength, mm -hmm. He will see us through whatever situation we're dealing yeah, with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, if never if somebody never sees this podcast, this is such a blessing to me personally. <laughs> it's just so encouraging because we've all yeah. been there. Yeah, I mean, there's been times in my life I honestly didn't know if the sun would come come up yeah. the next day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it, it you're just devastated and. And maybe you get some news from others that say you are in a terrible spot. You know what I mean? And we went through uh, back in 2008, some tough financial times. And, uh, you know, uh, everybody seemed to be losing, especially in the music industry and yeah. in the travel business, you know, uh, just two tough businesses mm -hmm. to be in and, and just wondered. Um, and to be honest with you, we sold 85% of, of our belongings, 85% of our things we sold and we moved to it a tiny apartment and we didn't even have storage. We just took what we could get in that apartment. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to my awesome wife, Sherry, she never complained, but uh, we honestly sold about 85% of what we own. Wow. Yeah. And um, we're really humbled by it. We didn't really share it with people because um, we were very embarrassed by all that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when you go through that, every life, life's sweeter. You know what I mean? Yes. Like we're all in yeah. a sweeter place now because... Yes. Because of what we went through, you know what I mean? And um so grateful. And thanks for opening your heart. You know, when you guys are vulnerable to share, it's interesting how God will use that. People are going to watch this and go, man, that's me. Maybe not the same exact situation, but thank you for sharing that. I mean, the, the nuggets you guys have shared and, uh, and then ending with, with Alan and just about our personal walk with God. Yeah. Man, you can't substitute that. You know, if you're studying yeah. to teach a Bible class, that's not the same as right. having private time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we're, we're all mm -hmm. great at corporate worship, mm -hmm. you know, leading in corporate worship, but do we have private worship, mm -hmm. right? you know, with mm -hmm. those families? And, right. Yes. Well, hey, Ken, why don't you close in prayer? And that's uh, just agree that um, mm -hmm. the Lord will use this podcast to maybe encourage some folks walking mm -hmm. through the same waters. All right. Let's pray. God, we have... Uh, declared over and over again in this conversation that you are faithful, mm -hmm. that you are good, mm -hmm. yes, and that um, your calling on us is real mm -hmm. and true. Yes. God, we are grateful mm -hmm. for that. We're thankful, God, for in our own lives, in our own ministries, in our own families, Lord, how you have been faithful to us, yes. and you have shown mm -hmm. yourself to be true over and over again, yeah. and that's why you're worthy yes. of our praise and yeah. glory. Mm -hmm. Anything, God, that we can offer to you, mm -hmm. our, our whole selves, our whole lives. And God, we pray for those that will be uh, watching and listening mm -hmm. to this, God, that they would be encouraged yeah. to seek after you, as Alan has, has reminded us, that our relationship with you is yeah. number one. Yeah. And it will fuel and feed everything else that you've called us to do uh, in ministry, in our families. Yes. And God, for those that are going through difficult times, mm -hmm. Lord, we pray that they would turn to you, mm -hmm. that they would find their hope, yes. and they're all in all mm -hmm. yes. in Jesus, mm -hmm. and that you would show yourself faithful mm -hmm. to them, Lord. Yeah. Give them uh, grace, give them faith, give them hope, mm -hmm. Lord, that you are making a way for them. Yes. And God, as we continue to serve you in our churches, and as those that are watching mm -hmm. continue to serve God, may we continue to seek to give glory and honor alone yes. to Jesus. Yes. Yes. We pray all this in his name. Amen. 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 You know, if you've heard music the whole time we've been uh, talking, it's not just you. You're not imagining it. We're at, we're at Cal Baptist and we've been accompanied by the uh, symphonic wind group right next door. So we'd like to thank them for <laughs> God bless you guys. Thanks so much.